Hello, and welcome back to Chapter 7 on Sampling Distributions. Specifically today, in Day 1 and Day 2 videos, we'll be covering Section 7.3 on Sample Means. After the section, we should be able to find the mean and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of a sample mean, of a x bar, sampling distribution of x bars. So sampling means are here, x bars. We'll have to check the 10% condition before calculating the standard deviation of a sample mean. Because in other words, in order to use this standard deviation, uh, we must check that 10% condition. In other words, that 10 times our sample size is less than or equal to our population. Or as the book writes it, uh, our sample size has to be less than or equal to one-tenth of our population. We'll also have to explain how the shape of the sampling distribution of a sample mean is affected by the shape of the population distribution and the sample size. So in other words, our sampling distribution will be affected by the shape of the population distribution. So we're going to have to first analyze what the population distribution is first. And once we know that and we know the sample size, we can determine what the sampling distribution of the sample mean looks like. And then if appropriate, we'll use a normal distribution to calculate probabilities involving sample means. So we'll talk about when it is appropriate, and again then we'll be using uh, the normal CDF on our calculators uh, to do some calculations. All right, let's take a look at the sampling distribution of x-bar. In other words, a sampling distribution of a sample mean. Well, when we record quantitative variables, when we collect data, uh, we are interested in other statistics such as the median, the mean, standard deviation, but sample means are the most common. So down below here, we're going to look at uh, considering the mean household earning for sample sizes of 100. On the left here, we have the population distribution of household earnings. Uh, so we can see this is in thousands of dollars. So we can see here the mean is roughly probably right around 60, you know, maybe $70,000 uh, for uh, yearly household income. And it is skewed to the right because uh, there are some people that do make a significant amount of money uh, uh, per year. Um, and again, it stops right down here at zero because you can't make negative money. So it just kind of naturally has this right skewed distribution for the population. But if we were to take uh, from the population samples of 100, uh, so take 100 households, take 100 households out there, and uh, then uh, calculate the mean of those 100 households, and do many, many, many of those and plot those, you notice we get a distribution that looks like this. So the question is, uh, what do we notice about the shape, center, and spread of each of these? First thing I want you to do is just kind of look at uh, the center of this, right around 70,000, 60, 70,000, and that's about what it is here too. We can notice that this distribution is a little bit tighter uh, than this one, and it looks a little more symmetric than the original population distribution. So let's discuss that a little bit. So when we choose many simple random samples from a population, in this last problem, we, we took many samples of size 100 and plotted those out. So, but if we take many simple random samples from a population, the sampling distribution of the sample mean is centered at the population mean mu, and it's less spread out. And again, that's reconfirmed back here. We can see that the sample, the mean uh, of our sample means is right in the same spot as the mean of our population. And obviously the graph here look, is a lot less spread out. It's a little bit tighter than what this one is. Okay. So below here are some facts. Um, so again, that suppose the X, that X bar is the mean of a simple random sample of a certain size drawn from a large population with mean mu and standard deviation. Then we know that the mean of the sampling distribution of, of all the X bars, of all the sample means, is the same as the population, uh, population mean. The standard deviation, though, again, as we mentioned, is a little bit tighter 
So the standard deviation of the sample means is equal to the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Now again, we're not going to have to prove this. Uh, we're going to take it as fact uh, at this level of course. And this is true. Again, we can only use this standard deviation. We can only use this standard deviation as long as the 10% condition is satisfied. And again, the book writes it like this, or we could also write it doing just a simple little algebra and say that 10 times the sample size has to be less than or equal to the population size. And again, these facts about the mean and the standard deviation x bar are true no matter what the shape of the population distribution has. So no matter what that population has, uh, these conditions above will hold true. But let's look at a specific uh, population distribution. Let's look at uh, the normal population. If we're going to sample from a normal population. So we've described the mean of standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample mean x bar, but we did not describe its shape. We didn't go back and describe the shape of that uh, sample of distribution. So if we go back, we didn't describe this shape and what we did in this previous problem. So I think it might uh, become uh, abundantly obvious here in just a minute. Um, but uh, that, we didn't, didn't describe a shape, but that's because the shape of the distribution of x bar depends on the shape of the population distribution. So in one important case, there's a simple relationship between the two distributions. It says, if the population distribution is normal, now again, back to our problem that we had here, this problem is, this population distribution is not normal. But, if we are sampling from a population distribution that's normal, then the sampling distribution x bar uh, is also normal. And that's true no matter what the sample size is. No matter what the sample size is. If you sample from a population that's normal, your sampling distribution of the x bars will also be normal, no matter what the sample size is. So, uh, the uh, sampling distribution of x bar has a normal distribution with mean mu. Okay, so our, uh, for sampling from a normal distribution, our sampling distribution will be, this, the mean of that will still be mu, and the standard deviation will be the sigma divided by the square root of n. And again, in order to use standard deviation uh, in, in our sample distribution, we have to meet the 10% condition. Again, that 10 times our sample size is less than or equal to our population. That's got to be satisfied uh, in order to use this. Okay, yeah, when we pick up tomorrow in day two, we're going to talk about the central limit theorem. Until then, you should be able to now do the assignment, the first one in our homework of problems. And that would be in problems 43 through 46, 49, 51, 53, and 55. Good luck, and we'll see you on day two of this section 7.3 to talk about the central limit theorem.